it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms and today I want to give a review on the Logosol portable chainsaw mills. The one I'm using right now is the Logosol M8. They've recently replaced that with the Logosol F2. Functionally they're very similar although there are some advantages to the newer version and I'll go over that towards the end. I think this could be the perfect product for a certain group of customers but other customers probably wouldn't be very happy with it. So it all depends on what you're doing and what other equipment you have. One advantage to this type of mill is the portability. I already had this log setting here, and today I'm acting as if I didn't have any log moving equipment, because that's a draw that you don't necessarily need any heavy equipment to use this mill. So I had the mill set up down by the pond. I just carried it up here and set it next to this log. Now, for the first time, I'm going to try loading a log with their system of, of ramps and resting spots and see if I can roll this log up. The log I'm using today probably isn't an ideal log to put on this mill because I had to cut it pretty short to make it work. And so it's just barely hitting the ramps. Every log is different and presents its own challenges. I had chosen this one and I was going to cut this end off with a bad spot. But then I noticed that the other end had kind of a curve to it and wasn't going to work very well. So I ended up having to cut this down to 8 feet. Which is about the width of our loading platform. So this would be easier probably with a longer log. But it is a good size diameter. This end is 18 inches. And that makes it pretty heavy. So I'm going to see if I can roll it up. You roll it up to here, let it stop. You roll it up again, and then roll it up here. Let's find out. So I was not able to get this to roll up these ramps, so I stopped and I looked on the Logosol website. I watched a lot more videos. I've already watched videos on, on this mill quite a bit. And I'm not seeing a lot of people doing what I was trying to do. I did see previously and saw again several people who had smaller diameter logs and they would set one end up on there, then set the other end up here and walk it up like that using the length of the log as a counterbalance sticking off over that way makes it easier to lift but there's no way I can lift this up on there without any kind of rigging that would take more time there's obviously there's always ways to do things manually but for me I can't get this up here I looked this up with a log weight calculator this log weighs 600 pounds and so I'm not going to try to lift one side so that's a little bit disappointing, but I'm going to set this up in place with the tractor and then we'll move on. So now that we've got the log loaded, I want to see how far it is from the rail to the pith to determine if we want this log to set level or if we want it to be on a little bit of an incline. That's one thing about this mill 
that's very convenient is it's it's really easy to offset your log for the pith. The pith here is six inches. On the other end, the pith is at five and a half. I was anticipating having a two or three inch difference there because this log has a lot of taper, but in actuality, that damaged spot on this end has equalized that because it's dropped down about two inches onto that bad spot. Now, if there was a third spot, if this log was supported in three or four spots, like on a regular sawmill, it would not be touching the end on this end. So just accidentally, it kind of self-leveled itself with that bad spot. Now there's a lot more height above the pith on this end. We have eight and a half inches above the pith down here. And surprisingly again, we've got about eight inches above the pith on the other end. That's another coincidence that's working out for us because the pith is not centered on that end. So now all we have to do is raise the log table until our cut height is where we want it. And we know that cut height is about half an inch above this stop right here. So I'm at 13 inches right now. I'm going to set the other side at 13 inches and see how it looks. The way we're set right now would we'll just barely skim anything off right about here. And we, we, that doesn't serve any purpose for us. So I'm going to go up another full inch. So now we're cutting it right about here and that should give us a nice flat surface if we want to roll the log over because in my last video I had a little bit of trouble with the log wanting to roll because my clamps weren't holding it tight enough. So one solution to that is make your first cut, roll it 180 and then clamp it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Probably need to sharpen this chain before making a cut. The time spent sharpening chains and the amount of fuel used are definitely concerns with this mill. So we're going to start out with a sharp chain and full of bar oil and gas or fuel mix and see how far that goes. Three takeaways from the clamping issue from last time. Make sure it's tight. Check it after every cut, tighten it after every cut, and flip your log when you have the opportunity to. I averaged between a minute and a half and two minutes per cut and turning this entire log into one by dimensional lumber required nine cuts. So there was 18 minutes of actual logging time. That tells me that if you really had your process down, you could do a log in 30 to 40 minutes, including your setup. So this actually made a really nice cut. Big advantage over a chainsaw mill is it doesn't feel like work pushing that through. It's on its track. You don't have to worry about stabilizing it. You don't have to mount a ladder to it or set up any kind of rails or anything like that. And I took a user 
advice and I put the mill slightly downhill so that gravity is helping it walk down. That made a nice clean cut and I should be using a ripping chain but I'll get to that when I cover the differences in the three type of mills. But I was counting in my head and estimated that took about a minute and a half to make a cut. It's a narrow cut too. But that's not bad at all. So let's go ahead and flip this over and make our next cut. As I flip this halfway over and the flat side hit the log stops, that brings me to another question someone asked. Can you fully square a cant with this? Yes, you can. I've got a 90 degree against a 90 degree right now. All I would have to do is lock my clamps in and cut the top. As a matter of fact, that's not what I had intended today, but let's just do that. All right, so we're already straight to the next cut. When I squared a cant with a regular chainsaw mill, there's a lot of hassle trying to figure out how to get my 90, and this is not. I was just putting the cart way out in front of the horse here because I was only thinking of the fact once I flipped this, I would not need to measure for the second cut because as long as the first cut and the second cut in that scenario are parallel to each other, you've got straight lumber. In this scenario, I've got to actually center the height on it and we're a lot higher on this end. We're nine inches off the pith. The other side has six inches. So there is a three inch height difference. So there's three inch difference in the pith height, full log difference, 16 and a half and 13. So there's three and a half inches difference. So I think I need to offset this an inch and a half. And I think I'll bring that side up an inch and a half and leave this side where it is. I split that and went an inch and a half instead of three inches because in this scenario, we'll take an inch and a half more off the top than we do the bottom. Then when we flip this over the other way, we will not offset the tables. And once again, we should be taking an inch and a half more off of this end than we do that end. Seems in, in my mind like that's going to square it up with the pith in the center. You can tell me if I'm right or not, but it seems to me like I have two square sides 90 degrees to each other. It doesn't really matter which way I turn it for that next cut. I think the only way it does matter is I don't want to turn it two more times. So when we're done, which way am I going to slice the planks off? So in this direction, we're 12 inches here, 10 and a quarter there. Other direction. I don't think it's really going to matter. I think it's going to end up being pretty much square so I can turn it either way. So we'll just turn it 90 degrees. This is making a nice tight 90 and a nice tight fit on these backstops, which is fantastic. That's not always easily accomplished. So let's start by going up the four clicks that we already went on that side, just to even the table out. All right, both sides are at 11. But with this set at 11, we're gonna take almost nothing off down there 
So probably going to come up an inch. We're down to about a half a tank of fuel or less. Normally I would refill this, but I want to see how far it goes on a full tank. I wanted to jump back in here and point out a couple of things that I think I overlooked in my summary at the end of the video. One is that the replacement for this is the Logosol F2, which is very similar, but it has some features and improvements, with the biggest one being it quickly and easily breaks down to be even more portable. Another thing I didn't mention is that you do not have to run this with a chainsaw. They have an electric milling head that still runs a chain, so it's very similar to putting an electric chainsaw in this, but it's a feed head that's specifically designed for this mill. Another feature that's built into this mill that I'm not using is what they call a winch. And it's basically a spool of line that you can use and crank that handle to pull the saw forward. My friend who loaned me the mill said he didn't really care for using it with that winch, so I haven't used it. They also have their own thin milling chains that remove less kerf, but I don't have one, so I can't test it out. I just did something stupid and nobody likes to look stupid so my first instinct I turn around and shut the camera off I'm like I just won't show them that but that's kind of selfish because this is a good chance to remind people not to do stupid things so in general that's not like a reflection on the mill I guess it is because it only has the two supports one on each side and that's probably the way it needs to be with the design but I put a log on here that's only two inches longer than the resting table, which made it a dangerous situation and gave it a risk to fall off. So be more thoughtful than that. On the website, their recommendation is if you're using short logs to take a couple of two by fours or two by sixes and set across here for a platform actually show you using a couple and and building a little frame to support the wood so anyway we'll lift that back up with some straps and get back to the video i think i was overconfident because those three cuts had went so smoothly i'm like wow this is just flowing along really happy with the way it's going got careless so be smarter than me <laughs> On a positive note, I'm really happy we are three for three on squaring up sides and having it fit tight on the bottom and against the backstop. What that tells me is that I'm going to get square lumber, or pretty darn close. Now because we're squared off, the idea of centering this with the height is out the window because we now need to just make cuts that are parallel to the bottom and go with it. So we need to set both sides at the same height, providing that we are removing any material at all from the low end. So I'll set the height off the low end and then adjust this end. Uh -oh. 
Routine now to go up five clicks after each cut. Draw the saw back, then go up five clicks, then make sure my clamps are still tight. That is fantastic dimensional lumber. Nice and straight. Beautiful. I bet that was the soil running out of gas if I killed it real quick before it finished. So we did almost one full log on a tank of gas. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We were on our eighth cut and it is out of gas. That last piece there is two and a half inches thick. It's really pushing it. I've set it where it's gonna clear that stop. And the piece I'm gonna have on top is about three quarters of an inch, which after drying, it's gonna be half an inch. And if it warps, it'll be almost unusable. And then I'd have one piece left that was an inch and a quarter. I don't think it's worth it to cut that. I'm gonna keep that and, and use it as a thicker piece. I would say when you get down to about three inches, you can cut that in half, but that's about the limit. Two and a half seems like it's pushing it. Let's talk about this product and what I think of it. One thing I see a lot is throwing out that everything is only good or bad. There's never a nuance to anything. When there are a lot of things, these conversations deserve nuance because not everyone is doing the exact same thing. Right off the top, this is not the product for me. Because, let's just take a look over here. That's my property. That's where I primarily get my logs. Everything up there is three foot. 
what I the logs I get at or have readily available are three foot diameter. They're gonna be four thousand pound logs. I wouldn't want to set one of them on this. I think this might be limited to around twenty eight inch wide. I want something bigger. That doesn't make it a bad product. So I've milled with a chainsaw probably 10 or 12 times now. I think I've got probably six videos on milling with a chainsaw. This is the first time I've ever liked doing it. In general, milling with a chainsaw is miserable. It's awkward. It's hard to do it standing up. You're mostly on your hands and knees. I built a little platform. That didn't really solve it. You have to negotiate the log trying to move. You're trying to keep the saw, even if you're using a ladder or whatever, a Gramberg mill, it's hard to keep it flat on there. And the wider, the better for that. So it's a fight. And then you're down at an awkward angle and you're really having to push on the saw. And there are advantages to a, a regular Alaskan chainsaw mill. So first, let me cover what those are. There are legitimately people who have nice, expensive bandsaw mills and still go out and run a chainsaw mill. And that's because you can, you can mill four, five, six foot wide with them. I've seen people running two saw heads and a seven, eight foot long bar. And no other setup, there are super wide slabbing mills, but those are high dollar. So advantage to a chainsaw mill, you can mill really wide stuff. Another advantage, giant tree falls at your neighbor's house. They said, hey, I got this big tree down. I can't do anything with it. Do you want it? You say, yeah, but I don't, I don't have a way to transport it. The log is going to be super heavy, or my little tractor can only lift half of what that log would weigh. I Put the Alaska mill in the bed of your truck, drive over there, mill it where it sets, and then you can haul the lumber. That's an advantage. So you're not necessarily just settling for a chainsaw mill. Now, I hate running them. Big, big, big disadvantage, right? You don't want to be miserable while you're working. Next thing, you say, well, what if we had a better chainsaw mill? Something that allowed you to stand up, allowed for accurate adjustment, a smooth sliding saw track. You would design something like this. And I think Logosol did a phenomenal job designing this. It even has things I like about it better than a bandsaw mill. You still have portability. This one, I can pick it up and just carry it around. The new version of this is the F2. It has several advantages over this one. It costs a little more. I think you're paying $1,500 base price for these, but it's fully collapsible just by turning a few knobs you can take the whole thing apart and put it in the trunk of your car. I literally saw a woman who has the F2 and she does on-site milling and she puts it in the trunk of a car and drives to the job and mills for people and they pay her and they keep the lumber. And you can't do that with anything else. You can get a trailer set up for your bandsaw mill and there's pros and cons to that and it adds to the cost. and. But portability is a huge benefit for this. The fact it's comfortable is a big benefit. The fact you can work up high is a big benefit. The downside is to some degree you lose your ability to handle the big material. You cannot set a 5,000 pound log on this. I think it might be rated for two to 3,000 though and that's getting pretty big when you're putting two to 3,000 pounds on it. Other advantages to this. This entire thing is aluminum. It will never rust. You can just leave it setting out here. It's not going to hurt anything. That's also why it's so lightweight. Those are big advantages. The ability to level one side separately from the other quickly and easily. That's an advantage. Downsides to this. The engine on a bandsaw mill, I would expect it to be good for five or 10,000 hours. There's a wide range of different engines on different bandsaw mills, but just in generically, in general, cheap bandsaw mill. You should get a lot of hours out of it. I can't answer it, but my guess is you will burn up your chainsaw a very long time before you put those thousands of hours on it. Now, does that matter? 
It's all about the customer. If you on your property have access to a bunch of logs the size I just dealt with, longer pro pre preferably, but that diameter, this is gonna be cheaper. And let's say you might only do four or five a year. I don't think you're gonna burn your saw up doing four or five logs. And if you've already got the saw, that's a big difference too. So it all comes down to your situation and what you're trying to do. Advantages of a bandsaw mill. Like I said, the engine should last much longer. It's more precise. It doesn't waste as much wood. This has a wide kerf. You're wasting some of your wood. Those are real and legitimate. What, what do I want? I want a big hydraulic mill. One of those 60, 70, $80,000 mills that just does everything for you and it'll read you a book while the log's being sawn. But I'm not, there's no way, I don't have, I can't see myself processing enough lumber without getting access to somebody else's property. I don't know how I would process enough lumber to pay for that mill. So the ideal thing for me is to get the widest mill I can get without paying a fortune, and I will definitely sacrifice some of the fancier attributes. So I'd like to have something like the Woodland Mills 130 Max. Something in that range that, that gives me a, a little bit wider cutting head. And even in that scenario, I might have to square my log up with a chainsaw mill before I can get my logs onto that. But I think that's the best scenario. But man, if you could, say, pick one of these up for used for a few hundred bucks, and you already have the chainsaw, and you're just going. You know, you can't... When you look at this, and this costs $2,000... And let's say with accessories and stuff, you spend $2,000, $2,200, I don't know what they are. Minimum $1,500. So let's say you spend $2,000 on this. And someone says, well, for $3,000, you could have got a bandsaw mill. That's true, but it would not be able to handle as big a log as this can. And it's not portable. I can take this. I could put a hoist on my ceiling just in the shop, something cheap. Simple rope hoist, chain hoist, and just, I could hang this up on the ceiling. I could hang it on the wall. I could put hooks on the wall. Just carry this in the shop, hang it on the wall. Never in the way again. You got a bandsaw mill. You have to set up a dedicated spot for it. You have to clean out under it. You have to move it to clean out under it, or you're shoveling out from under it. With this, I'll just move it and scoop the sawdust out with a bucket. <coughs> so. It's a bigger commitment having that bandsaw mill because it's not aluminum. Ideally, you keep it under a roof. And like, that's a lot of extra. I mean, you're adding more to the cost if now you're going to build a building to house it in. So it's not a straightforward conversation. It has nuance. It deserves nuance. And I think for what this is, Logosol, Logosol, did a phenomenal job engineering it. And it was pleasant for me today. The weather's perfect. There's nothing in the world I would have rather be, been doing today than sawing this log into boards on this logo saw mill. So I really <laughs> I have a feeling this was a long video, so I appreciate you if you stuck it out to the end. I'm going to put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.